Sure. Um, I think that uh, you know, over and above the traditional video game experience that we bring to the consumers with PlayStation 3 or PlayStation Portable for that matter, uh, it's important for us to make sure that we have a variety of different features that really enhance the community aspect of uh, our, uh, our platform. And one of the best ways for us to, to do that is to base um, you know, some of our games, like for example Little Big Planet or Mod Nation Racers, to give you a couple of examples, where the consumers can actually generate their own content and share that with others for a community experience. And you know, we have a, a tradition of doing that with titles like SingStar, for example, as well. Uh, and that really enhances the gameplay experiences for the consumers, mainly because they're not just playing, but being part of a community, being able to share experiences. Um, and you know, as you go online, you know, whether it's social networks or uh, you know other ways of of being part of a community in the online space, that's a very important uh, you know uh, experience for the consumers. And we certainly want to make sure that in a video game way, we provided that community experience uh, as well for our consumers. Um, you know, the community feature um, is a very important aspect of uh, the gaming experience for PlayStation 3. Uh, it, also in terms of user generated content or being able to just share your experiences on Facebook and what have you. Uh, and that's just as important as some of the other uh, initiatives that we have for growing the install base of our PlayStation products, including our initiative this year to really uh, go aggressive in terms of 3D gaming. Uh, as well as bringing a new uh, experience to the consumers through the, uh, the PlayStation Move. Um, and in some instances, actually combining PlayStation Move with 3D. Um, and obviously, you know, the community aspect can be a part of that experience as well. So, you know, all these kinds of different, uh, you know, elements that we bring to the table really to, again, enhance the video game experience is very important to our overall strategy. One of the things that we want to accomplish with the PlayStation Move controller is to make that a second de facto controller. So we've always had the controller that you hold in your hand as the first de facto controller for the PlayStation, uh, dating back to the original PlayStation actually. Uh, but we want to make sure that the PlayStation Move becomes a second de facto controller where uh, it's almost a, uh, you know, a standard uh, feature set, if you will, of the PlayStation experience going forward. Now, at the beginning, we're only going to have uh, you know, some titles that are PlayStation Move compatible, but uh, I'm very confident that you know, as the months and years go on, uh, it's going to be a very compelling entertainment experience for consumers, and that will invite more content creators to create PlayStation Move compatible games, uh, and therefore really uh, make it a positive cycle where, you know, looking back, it becomes a second de facto control that it's a must-have for all PlayStation 3 users. Uh, it's a very good question. I think that one of the important things there is to make sure that we have, between our first party studios and working with our third party publishing partners, to have as many 3D and also Move compatible uh, games as much as possible. Talking specifically about Move, uh, again, if it's a very compelling entertainment experience, then I think the users will want to go out, even if they had purchased a PlayStation uh, when it first came out, the additional controller and the PlayStation Eye. And by the way, a lot of consumers already have the PlayStation uh, anyway. So for $39.99, you can pick up a, uh, you know, the PlayStation Move controller standalone, uh, which is, I think, a very affordable price to begin with. Um, and uh, so it's all about the entertainment content and making sure that we have, uh, you know, compelling content that really the consumers say, you know what, I'm going to go out and buy that PlayStation controller uh, and, uh, and, and uh, the Move controller. I think that's really up to the, the content creators, uh, but you know a lot of games lend themselves to the, the Move controller. Um, now some games you probably don't need it, other games are definitely something that you know, is a must have, um, and other titles will kind of be in between. Um, but I think that as time goes on, all the games that can be enhanced with the Move compatibility, uh, I think will have that feature set uh, included in, uh, in the games. Um, you know, that's something that everybody's been talking about for the longest time. 
Um, and uh, as I've said before, uh, you know, we have a lot of different assets within the Sony group. Uh, you know, obviously we work with Sony Ericsson on various initiatives uh, and also with uh, Sony Electronics. Um, and you know, if it's the right product at the right price with uh, you know, a compelling entertainment experience rooted on video games, yeah, that's something that we would look at, but uh, you know, I was kind of surprised at the latest rumors that was that was going around. Um, and I think a lot of people were expecting something at Gamescom, yeah. but uh, you know, uh, you know, that's all I can say about that. And for the time being, but uh, you know, again, if there's something that uh, you know we feel is a good fit for the consumers, that's something that we'll look at. I, I think that uh, you know whether it's uh, you know the Apple products like iPod or iPad um, or the iPhone or the various uh, Android-based portable devices, Windows 7 devices, etc., that really have a you know what we call the social or the casual gaming aspect. Um, I think it's very uh, good, basically overall for the industry because there are going to be a lot of consumers who buy these devices who buy it obviously to uh, do a lot of different things, perhaps including gaming, but some consumers perhaps never really got into gaming before. And if we can have one more consumer that started to enjoy video games through these casual game devices, uh, you know, you're going to have some, maybe not all, uh, they're going to graduate to devices like the PlayStation Portable. Um, and if they like that experience, they might graduate into a home-based console like PlayStation 3. Um, and if you look at in its totality from a video game industry perspective, we've gained one additional consumer that perhaps may not have come into this space had it not been for the casual gaming platform. So I think overall, um, to the extent that it grows the pie of video game uh, users, if you will, I think that's a good thing overall for the industry. I think that uh, you know, if you look back at uh, you know the devices that we bring to the market, uh, we make sure that our uh, consoles are based primarily, first and foremost, to play video games, and that's why our devices always has a controller, and you know the PSP has physical buttons as opposed to virtual buttons. Um, and I think that for an immersive video game experience, whether in the home or in the portable space, you need to have physical buttons. Um, to really enjoy video gaming. Um, and so from that perspective, uh, you know, I'd like to think that we offer a different video game experience with our devices as compared to the casual gaming with some of the non-game devices that also plays video games. Um, but I think, you know, as I said before, there's certainly, um, I think, an intersection there for where you know, a lot of the casual gamers will move on to the more game-specific devices and platforms like the PSP and the PlayStation 3.